Well, howdy. Welcome here once again to the Double M Farm. In the last episode, <laughs> uh, we uh, finished putting the pins all back in a little red. And as you saw, we replaced these big boom pins. One there, the one at the bottom end of the boom, and then the main pin right there that runs pivot pin I call it didn't all of the uh, greasable pins there were in good shape except these two that were impacted with mud and wouldn't take grease so I replaced them with two new ones now the reason for replacing these boom pins the two big boom pins and the pivot pin was because these wells crack which appears to let the center pin spin independently from this outside piece. But after inspection, it can't. As you can see, there's a cotter key going through it. Uh, I've replaced all the cotter keys on the clevis pins with the quick latch pins, but I uh, don't have any big enough to go on these. But let's take a look at these broken pins. I wanna see if you guys agree with me on my thought process here get in here to the shop there you see uh, this is a brand new pin right here that's a brand new pin I got three so I used two obviously you can see how they're welded up and uh, that's what it looks like out of the box brand new pin okay these are the two broken pins so, as you can see, see if I can pick it up without it falling apart. As you can see right there, well's cracked, which means this will come off, which means the center sleeve will come off, which means the bottom piece will come off. So you now have a pin in four pieces. One, two, three, four, hey, I can count. Uh, so uh, just on the outset, you think, wow, that's terrible. You know, that's just gonna destroy the machine or it's gonna affect the productivity or the operation of the machine. But let's look at this a little closer, does it? All right, there's a brand new pin. Here's the other one that's broken, just like the one I just showed you and took apart. Put a couple of cotter keys in it to keep these end pieces from sliding off because the wells are broken on the end, as you can see. But this is the way it was inside the machine with the cotter keys in it. So now you tell me, what's the difference in these two pins? What is this brand new pin going to do that this broken pin can't do? There's no difference in the amount of play. You can see the gaps right here are the same i've measured them there's no difference in the diameter this one hasn't worn down any uh it's discolored from the grease but it hasn't worn down any so when this is enclosed inside of that sleeve in the boom with these cotter keys holding these caps on the only thing that catastrophic that could happen is if you lost or sheared off a cotter key then this piece obviously would come off and bad things may happen because it could all fall out. But other than that, and that would be something very easy to monitor, you can see the cotter keys very easily on the machine. So other than the cotter key shearing off, which again amazes me, think about that, during seven and a half years of operation, cotter key has held up but the weld broke and you just got a crack there. And you get it on this one that doesn't have the cotter key and you can see the crack and it will come off and you can slide it on and just twist it till it fits right back in place. Now I can re-weld that. So what I'll do, if I re-weld that, then it's as good as this brand new one. But do I need to re-weld it? Other than the fact that you, that your cotter key could shear off, 
So if you're worried about that, get some grade eight bolts or uh, latch pins and put on it. And then why is it even worth the effort of welding that? What are you accomplishing? I, again, I just, I can't see that the brand new uncracked pin is going to do anything or affect the performance of the machine any more than the two broken pins are. And there you see, that's what happens when you don't have the cotter key to hold it in place. I have to twist it and get it, there we go, to fit. So let's pick up the one that's got the cotter key so it don't fall apart in my hand. So uh, I just, I'm just a little uh, befuzzled, befuddled as to whether it's even worth spending the 20 bucks on a new pin um, so you guys can uh, decide that for yourselves. That's what it looks like, the new pin versus the cracked pin. So we'll, uh, we'll just monitor the situation as we use the machine and see if it's made any difference. I can't see any difference. Here's the main pivot pin, and it's the same way. Now it cracked on this end. but it hasn't cracked all the way through. It may show up on camera. It's cracked here but it didn't crack all the way around. So this cap is still on, and as you can see, it's still attached. This side end was cracked all the way through. So I put a nut, excuse me, a bolt and a washer, just like it mounts to the machine, on it to keep the main pivot pin from falling apart in my hand while I make this video. And there you can see that one is completely cracked, just like the two boom pins. So then the pivot pin will come apart. And uh, I'm still not completely understanding why the thing was even built this way. I'm sure the engineers in China had some reason for designing the pins this way. Maybe all of these moving parts provide more surface area for grease to uh, work up inside and behind all of these uh, different sections. But uh, again, I've used the machine now. I had to dig up a water line in the front yard of the house to add a spigot so my wife could water her flowers. And uh, I could not tell any difference in the performance of the machine um, with the new pins compared to these three broken pins. Uh, performance was the same. So uh, that's just... Uh, a heads up on changing out from the broken pins to the new pins. I mean, I think this pin was just a little over 20 bucks. And those were like, I don't remember, they're less than 20. So it's not like you're spending a lot of money. But uh, is it really necessary? Uh, if you guys see anything there that you think may be a reason to go from that pin to that pin, other than the fact that when you grease it, grease is going to leak out around there now, you know, but. I guess that just means you grease it more often, but that's not a bad thing. So, uh, I don't know. That's just, uh, just the way it works. And then the other thing that I wanted to show you is something else I did that I mentioned I was going to try. So I figured I'd better show it to you since I'm trying it. Is the stock pin here at the part of the machine that controls the side to side, left to right movement of the boom. Uh, as everyone knows, they come from the factory with considerable play. And I'm just going to move it back and forth with my hand. Let's see if I can get the camera right over it. And that's the amount of play that is in the machine. And not only is it, as you can see that pin moving, not only is it back and forth movement, but there's also a bigger gap that this uh, hydraulic ram goes up and down this way a considerable amount. So what I've done, see if I can do this without getting the camera too greasy, went to Tractor Supply and bought a grade 8 hitch pin, 1 inch, which is just slightly larger diameter than the stock pin. And hands are greasy now, see if I can pull it out. There we go. So there's the stock pin. And what I've done is I put, because the collar 
is not a whole lot bigger than that hole I decided to put a washer just to uh, keep from the chance of it wallowing and going through and then because of that up and down motion of that piston I'm sliding a washer in there as well and dropping it in to the hole and now there is considerably less that's it that's all the motion we've got side to side we've got almost none up and down and I uh, and very little side to side that's it that's about half the motion that we have with the stock pin now I could probably add another washer I could probably go up a slightly thicker uh, hitch pin or as some have done could bore it and put bushings in it my only thought process there is if you get it too tight then you start running into the danger of breaking something I like having some free play and that is considerably less free play than what we had with this pin. So we'll see how it operates and uh, go from there. I'll be doing another digging video pretty soon and we'll uh, do some comparison, but there's considerably less free play there. Oh, I had to cut that hitch pin off and I drilled a hole in it and I'll just put a latch pin in there to hold it in place. But, uh, I think it's going to work nicely and uh, make sure if you do put if you go to the one inch hitch pin make sure that you cut it off short enough that it doesn't hit the axle housing when you swing the boom around to the left now i'm going to close this video out it don't want to be too long but i have a uh, a new thing that i built i uh, was encouraged by a friend of mine ants pants andres over in Estonia. I follow him. If you want a real good follow, follow Ants Pants and watch Andreas. He's an outstanding YouTube creator. And he just recently built a parts cleaner. And well, obviously with these pins and uh, the clevis pins that I needed to clean, I decided I'd build me a parts cleaner. Now, I hesitated to show it on camera because the patent that I applied for hasn't come back yet. But it's such a complicated machine that I don't think there are too many people out there with the engineering capability of duplicating it. So I'm going to go ahead and show it to you. And you'll see right off that I used some Harbor Freight parts to build it. Here it is right here. It's my new parts washer. Like I say, I use some Harbor Freight parts to build it. And uh, has a very highly secretive solution in there. I've got some of the clevis pins in there soaking. It's a very secretive solution. It's a mixture of um, highly volatile purified H2O and dish detergent. And now the, the real secret to this machine is having the agitator function. And this took a lot of design work. I spent, I don't know, a couple of days on that. I've been working on this since the last video came out. So um, it, it took some, some engineering ingenuity. God, I can't even believe I said that. To, uh, to come up with the agitation but I've got some clevis pins in there. They've been soaking overnight, and uh, I'm going to turn on the agitator. So y'all, y'all hold on to your butts here. I'm going to turn on the agitator, and we're going to agitate these clevis pins a little. So here we go. One, two, three. Agitator on. <laughs> Off. You can see how it foamed up there. The water was agitating. It's doing a super job. It's really, matter of fact, I cleaned these two. These two were super greasy. If you saw the other video, you saw how greasy they were, and uh, you can see how clean they are now. So it's working real well. I'm extremely pleased with it. One of the best parts washers I think I've ever seen. I'm hoping the patent will come in soon, and uh, if it does, I'll uh, put a link where you can order them, and I won't be charging much for them. I'll... Uh, May even give you free shipping if you're willing to pay for them. So we'll see uh, how that all works out. But anyhow, getting back to the serious stuff, just wanted to give you my thoughts on these broken pins. Um, <laughs> I, again, I just I don't understand the design to begin with, and how much that. Well, the only thing I see that weld is doing is it's eliminating the possibility of shearing off a pin. 
and it's keeping grease from leaking out here. But as far as the performance of the pin itself, it's really not doing anything that I can see. So there you go. My thoughts on the broken hitch pins. I appreciate you visiting us here again on the Double M Farm. And we'll talk to you again real soon.